So now that you have your application up and running on the cloud provider of your choice, I wanted to highlight some of the, the features, functionality, and workflow uh, for managing this app in production. So let's get right into it. I'm showing here an app that <clears throat> um, has that's, that's running just on a single server so that's what we're seeing here. So we see a, li uh, a list of servers. In this case, we just have one. And then within each server, we get a, a, a list of the app components that are actually running on that server. So I can expand that and see, get a little bit more detail. And we'll notice here uh, that I actually have a web component, a uh, couple of data components, and then a worker component. Now, <clears throat> And by default, Nanobox is going to uh, launch every app with, uh, you know, on a single server, and it's going to put all of the components uh, that comprise that application onto that single server. Also, it's going to put all of the platform components on that server as well. And the platform components are the built-in um, uh, micro-platform pieces that Nanobox provides that, that uh, gives your application all of the functionality that it needs to run in production. So what if I need to scale? Well, now, or if I just want to scale this individual server. So Nanobox provides a really simple way for us to, to select a new size of server. And these options are provided by the underlying provider. <clears throat> and then when I save, Nanobox is going to order a new server and migrate all of, all of the current components and platform that are platform components that are running on this server to that and then update the routing. Well, the other thing that I could do is I could break these components out of this server onto their own server or even into a, their own horizontal cluster. So I could break, I could break these out into their own um, uh, here or select horizontal cluster. Doing so will allow me to select the size of the instances and then the number of instances. And after reviewing this, Nanobox will uh, order all of those servers for me, provision them, and then update the routing mesh to, uh, to load balance between them. Okay, the next thing that, uh, that Nanobox does that's really helpful is it provides a condensed uh, uh, overview of the health of this particular server. You can get a more granular uh, look at the health of this server, and you can even look back in time or get a sense of how the particular metrics uh, perform at given uh, times of the day. And lastly, what you'll see here is an actual breakdown of the components and what they're using on that server. It's really, really helpful. With each of the components as well, I get a breakdown or the, or the overview, a condensed overview and a full breakdown uh, with each of those individual components. In this case, this would just be the Docker container, the underlying Docker container for these uh, components. Okay, so we've covered uh, how, um, uh, how you might uh, scale and kind of how the servers are, are broken up. And you can see it's very flexible. You can either uh, resize your individual server or you can start to break your app across multiple servers, which we always recommend. And now what I wanted to show quickly is how uh, you can access these servers. So Nanobox is, is not a black box. It does not prohibit access. In fact, we encourage you to be able to have access to everything. So uh, simply by dropping down the console, you'll see the command that you can run uh, in your terminal, assuming you have Nanobox desktop installed, that will drop you right into this particular server. With each app component as well, I have a unique command that I can run in the terminal, which will drop me directly into the Docker container uh, that is running uh, this particular component. And if I had multiple components in a scalable cluster, I could simply uh, add a dot, and then the number for dot three would be the third instance, and that would drop me uh, right into the third instance. When you're dealing with data <clears throat> and data components, you have an additional uh, connect and that connect tab gives you the information you need to create a a secure tunnel into your production database using the the desktop tool 
and the credentials that you can uh, connect to. And lastly, before we jump on to some of the app introspection tools, you have the ability to, um, with, each, with each component and even the server itself, you have the ability to do some simple administration tasks. Like for instance, if you wanted to simply um, uh, restart all of the processes within the containers, or you could reboot all the containers, you could even rebuild all of them and update uh, to the latest stable config. And that option is available for every component, whether it is a platform component or uh, whether it is an app component. And additionally, for each server, you have the ability to reboot the server and delete it when all the components uh, are gone. Okay, so um, hopefully that's been a, a good summary overview. Uh, we have lots of videos uh, that, that go into each one of these in depth uh, with, much, with much more information. Uh, but I just wanted to provide a quick summary of some of the things you can do to help you, uh, to help you scale, um, uh, introspect, and also uh, connect to your servers and containers. So for the last part of this, I want to jump over to a personal app that I've recently launched. This is a trivial app, doesn't do anything, it's completely contrived. But I wanted to show you how we can actually look into uh, the logs. So as a developer, you kind of want to know how your app, if, if your app is making noises. And so you have the ability to see live logs. So anything that, uh, that ha anything that your log, or sorry, that your application outputs will get uh, pushed up into the dashboard and you'll see it stream here. Or you can look at your historical uh, output you can copy, you can paste, you can expand, you can view more. Um, and so that's really nice. We also have a history of all of the deploys. We can adjust the number of deploys that we store and you can redeploy to any point that is uh, that, that's stored on here. So I only have a single deploy, so you can't see that, but with uh, multiple deploys, you'll have the ability to, uh, to redeploy. I, uh, I, every, every app has a, an IP address that I can add as an A record, as well as a convenient C name that you can add as an A record. You can add SSL TLS certificates to this app with a native integration to Let's Encrypt. So within 30 seconds, you could have a valid, uh, uh, free, encrypted uh, application using Let's Encrypt. And if we want to add environment variables to the application, we can do that through the dashboard as well. And then simply by adding the environment variables here, they will be accessible to our application. Nanobox will also uh, uh, generate environment variables for our app for when we add databases and uh, auto connect. We also get, a, we also get a, um, a view of the box file at the point that this app is deployed. And then lastly, we have uh, some, uh, some administration tasks that aren't really that, uh, that exciting. But hopefully, you, you've been able to get a sense of how Nanobox can really take the burden of managing your production infrastructure completely away from you, leaving you to focus on your application, developing features, focusing on uh, the problems within your uh, within your organization, within your domain, and not having to sink time into managing the infrastructure, learning uh, uh, learning the the specialization that's required. You can scale up on you know on a moment's notice. You can scale down. You can you can experiment. You can scale up, down, scale out, scale back in, and uh, using the uh, the health overview, you can get a sense of how your application reacts to that. And all the while, it's completely flexible, completely fluid, and you, uh, you can just experiment and experiment until you find that, uh, that perfect spot, and your application configuration will never have to change. Uh, all of that can happen uh, through, through Nanobox and allowing you then to just focus. So uh, hopefully I uh, uh, have provided enough of an overview so that you get a sense, but I would really encourage you, we've created many videos and lots of documentation that highlight each individual uh, feature and workflow 
uh, in, in much greater detail. And I would encourage you to go look at that so you can get a sense of how that works. But uh, I appreciate you for joining here and I would encourage you to stay tuned to the other videos that we have. So thank you very much.